Hey everyone, and welcome back. Ready for another deep dive. Today we're getting into something crucial for anyone who wants to make their Python GUIs actually user-friendly. We're talking Kinter message boxes. Those little windows that pop up, right? They seem simple, but there's more to them than meets the eye. Exactly. And luckily, we've got a great source to guide us an excerpt from plus2net.com, a website packed with web development tutorials. They've always got some solid practical advice over there. For sure. And they jump right into explaining how these message boxes, they're not just for errors or anything, is how your program actually has a little chat with the user, which is pretty important when you think about it. Oh, absolutely. It's like the direct line of communication. Right. And this source does a nice job of breaking down the different types. We've got the informational kind, like your classic shower, show info. Those are pretty self-explanatory. Just getting the message across. But then it gets interesting because we get into the ones that want something back, Asheril, from the user, ask or cancel, ask it's no, that sort of thing. And suddenly our GUI isn't just talking at someone, it's having a two-way conversation. Which is exactly what you want if you're aiming for a more interactive, dynamic kind of feel. Totally. And reading through the source, I had this little aha moment about the ASCII yes, no cancel box. Oh, what was the revelation? It's that cancel button, you know, like it's always there, but we take it for granted. It's the unsung hero of good UX design, I swear. Seriously. Because imagine you're the user. You're about to do something big in the program, and you're one click away from messing it all up. That cancel button is like a safety net. It gives you that moment to breathe, to reevaluate, and maybe dodge a bullet. Exactly. It's not just about providing options. It's about respecting the user's intent. And that got me thinking about all the ways we can make these message bosses even more user-friendly beyond just having the right buttons. Well, for starters, our brains love visuals. Right. And this source actually mentions that they talk about using icons, which might seem like a small thing. Huh. But picture this. You see a message box, plain text. Maybe you're in a hurry. But then, bam, there's a big old warning sign right next to it. It's like, okay, got to pay attention to this one. Exactly. It bypasses all that mental processing of reading and get the point across instantly. <laughs> and not only can you use those pre-made icons, but the source points out you can customize the actual message text too. Ah, so it's not just generic error messages anymore. Nope. You can use variables. So it's like, hey, username, looks like something went wrong with that specific thing you were doing. Okay, now that is neat. It's like the program actually recognizes you're a person, not just some abstract user. Totally. And the source even gives some code snippets to show how easy it is to implement all this. I always appreciate that practical examples over abstract theory any day. Absolutely. <laughs> but before we get too deep into the code itself, I want to loop back to something you mentioned earlier. That whole idea of the cancel button being so crucial for good UX. Oh, it's something I feel strongly about. And the source got me thinking even more about WHY. It's so important. It's like... In a way, that button represents the user's freedom, their ability to back out of a decision. Especially in today's world, where software can be so complex, so demanding, having that escape hatch, it just makes the whole experience feel less intimidating. It's like that feeling when you realize you can put the genie back in the bottle if you need to. Precisely. It's about empowering the user, not trapping them in a maze of irreversible actions. And Kinter's message boxes, they give us this really elegant way to do that without a ton of complicated code. Which is always a win in my book. Mine too. So with that in mind, I think it's time we start digging into some of those code examples the source provides. Because seeing it in action really brings it all home, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Let's see how these message boxes work their magic. So the source starts us off simple with the show info box, which is basically just putting a message on the screen. Yeah, it's the here's the info, nothing fancy approach. Exactly. And they even give a little code snippet like, look how easy this is. Always good for those. Aha, I can actually do this moment. <laughs> for sure. And it's funny because even though it's so basic, that show info box, it gets used all the time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, think about those little confirmation pop-ups you get after completing a task online. Right. Your order has been placed, yeah. that kind of thing. Exactly. Simple, but it provides that important feedback loop. Totally. But, okay, let's step it up a notch, because where it gets really interesting is with the interactive message boxes. Like the Ask a Minnow, which this source uses a bunch in their examples. Ah, yes. Now we're getting into decision-making territory. Right, because now... The program isn't just saying something, it's asking the user, what do you want to do? Hmm. And they even give an example of using this for closing an app. Oh, that's a good one. Like, hey, are you sure you want to quit? You've got unsaved work. Exactly. It's like a little guardian angel making sure you don't lose anything important. And it's such a simple thing to implement, 
but it makes a huge difference in terms of user experience. For sure, because no one wants that feeling of, wait, I didn't mean to do that. Now everything's gone. Panic attack averted. Don't yes. safe day. Okay, but let's get into the fun stuff customization because we were talking about how icons can make a message box really pop. Oh, yeah, and this source is all about making those message boxes visually appealing. Right, and they give this great example where they create a warning message box and they even include the code for making a custom icon for it. Okay, now you're talking my language because who wants to be stuck with just the generic system icons, right? Exactly. You can create something that fits the style of your program perfectly. It's all about those little touches that make a big difference. Totally. And not only that, but they also show how you can use variables to customize the text of the message. So it's not just error. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, username, there's a problem with this specific file. Much more personable, much more helpful. Right. It's like the difference between getting a form letter and a handwritten note. I love that analogy because it really yeah. is about that personal touch. Exactly. And they even provide the code snippet for that so you can see how easy it is to implement. See, they're making our lives easier. A and D making our programs more user friendly. It's a win win. But OK, there's one more thing I want to dig into before we move on. We've talked about show info, ask yes, no. Huh? But what about getting actual INPUT from the user? Ah, uh, yes. Like when you need them to type something in. Exactly. And that's where the asterisk message box comes in. Okay, now that sounds powerful. Right. Like imagine you need the user to enter their username or a file path or something like that. The asterisk box makes that super simple. So much easier than having to create a whole separate input field or something. Right. And again, they give a really clear example of how to do this, even showing how to grab what the user types in and use it in your code. I'm sensing a theme here. Yeah. They really like practical examples, don't they? Which I appreciate. Because let's be real. Who wants to wade through pages of theory when you just want to see how something works? Exactly. Sometimes you just need to see the code in action to really grasp it. Totally. So with all that said, I think we've covered a solid foundation here, wouldn't you say? Definitely. We've gone from the basics of displaying a simple message to actually interacting with the user and even customizing the look and feel of those message boxes. We've even touched on how these little boxes play into the bigger picture of user experience design. And we've seen how Tickkinter makes it surprisingly easy to implement all of this, even for someone who's not a coding wizard. Exactly. But before we wrap up this part, there's one last thing that's been ticking in my brain, something this source kind of hinted at, but didn't fully explore. It's like we've opened this treasure chest of pincher message boxes, right? We've got all these pre-made tools, the show info, the ask as no, the whole shebang. Ready to build some solid user interaction, all with these nice little prefab components. Exactly. But then the source mentions this thing almost in passing, and it gets you thinking. What if you want to go off-road? Off-road, you mean? Custom dialogue boxes. Yeah. Like, not just using the ones Kinter gives you, but building your own from scratch. Ah, now you're talking next-level stuff. It's one thing to bake a cake from a box. It's another to whip up something totally original. That's a perfect analogy. Because suddenly you're not limited to just the ingredients in the box. You can get creative, experiment with flavors, make something truly unique. And in the world of programming, that means having complete control over the look, the feel, the whole experience. Exactly. We've talked about icons, custom text. But what if you want to go even further? Custom graphics, animations, maybe even sound effects? Yeah. The possibilities are endless. Now you're talking about transforming those dialogue boxes into something truly special, something that really wows the user. Right. It's like the pre-built message boxes. They're like those little pop-up notification windows on your phone but custom ones. That's like having a whole interactive app experience just within that little window. And Trikin gives you the tools to do that. It does. They don't go super deep into it in this source, but they mention it's possible, which just opens up a whole new world of possibilities. It's like they're giving you a taste of what's possible. There's a little glimpse behind the curtain. Exactly. And that's what I love about exploring these topics. We start with a specific focus, but it inevitably leads to all these other exciting avenues. It's like you start by following one path, but then you realize there's a whole interconnected network of trails just waiting to be explored. And that's what makes learning so much fun. It's not just about mastering one thing. It's about discovering all the connections and possibilities that branch out from there. Couldn't agree more. Well, folks, as much as we'd love to keep geeking out about custom dialog boxes, I think it's time to wrap up this deep dive. But not without leaving our listeners with a little something to ponder. Always. So here's a thought. We've seen how Tinter gives us the power to create these amazing user-friendly interfaces. But what are your design philosophies? 
How can you use these tools to not just build something functional, but something truly delightful to use? Those are the questions that keep us coders up at night. <laughs> For sure. But seriously, folks, thanks for joining us on this uh, deep dive into the world of Kinter message boxes. We hope you've learned a thing or two, and more importantly, that you're feeling inspired to go out there and create something amazing. Remember, the only limit is your imagination. And a little bit of Python code, of course. Until next time, happy coding.